Okay guys, I'm gonna try to do a quick follow-up video of Drain Voyager, the pre-mix style heat exchanger today. I got this unit running in test. As soon as it starts heat, I'm gonna show you a couple things and I'll shut it off so you can hear me better. So first is the ignition module. You can watch this as it, uh, once it goes into heat, you guys, I'm sure most of you guys have noticed the lights come on on the module. It tells you that the unit is falling through heat. Now we got a blinking. That motor is starting. Hey guys, I'm gonna shut this off because what I really want to focus on today is this is an old style Voyager with the UCP module, the big circuit board in it. Uh, this is the ignition board on a train. It's got a green LED down here. When the when the LED is beating on and off like a heartbeat, you have a steady call for heat. Uh, if there's a code, it'll flash here and tell you what the code is. I'll include a list of codes in my email today with this video. The other thing that I've had questions about, guys, is this, and I did also when I first started, that big transformer. This unit happens to be a 208, 230 volt unit. So on a 208, 230 volt unit, a transformer only has two taps on the bottom. On the 460 volt trains, this transformer has a dual output voltage on it. The reason they do that is this ignition module and the igniter all runs off 120 volts on all of these train voyagers with the premix burner. They're all 120, so they standardized on the board and the igniters and all that stuff. The draft motors on these trains all run on 208, 230 volt. So if you have a 460 or 575 volt rooftop unit, they put a big monster transformer in up here. And that transformer has one of the sets of outputs on the bottom is for the ignition module. The other set is for the draft motor, to run the draft motor. So with all that said, uh, what I wanted to focus on guys is if you've ever seen this transformer burnt up in these trains, what happens is always leads back to this draft motor in a train. You guys can see in here, do you see the windings? You know, through the little window in the motor. What happens on these trains is this red wire is hot all the time. It's always got power to it. Whether the unit's running heat or cooling or, or running nothing, there's always power introduced there. Just the way it's designed. What happens on these is, and I'll send the service bulletin along. The service bulletin expired a few years ago. But uh, one of those little wires breaks loose on these motors, and that wire touches the inside of the case of the motor, completes the path to ground, and that motor will be running all the time. Several of you guys have seen this, figured it out, you know, know what's going on there. I've had some questions about it though, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, do a little follow-up. You walk up to a train unit and there's no call for heat, um, and you've tested it, you know there's no call for heat. If you unplug this motor, and the only wire you have power on is the red one at the bottom and the motor runs as soon as you turn the disconnect back on you've got a bad draft motor um, the way to fix that is obviously to replace the draft motor and also there's a little relay kit guys it's a little ice cube relay that goes in the control box some of you have seen units with that relay mounted in the control box it also comes with a wiring harness and what it does is it it ultimately it isolates this draft motor from that power when there's not a call for heat. So it will it will prevent motor fires and failures. And if you've ever seen one of these transformers burn up when it melts the whole wiring harness in the unit and you've got to buy a new wiring harness and rewire the whole unit, um, that's typically the cause of it is started here at the draft motor. So if you have one of these draft motors that's running all the time, unplug it right away. Do yourself a favor so you don't do more damage to the unit. And whenever you replace a draft motor in this style of train, always, always, always buy the kit, the relay isolation kit from train. I'll, I'll give you the number and show you the kit in the email as well, along with this video today. Um, it's very simple. What you, It mounts up here in the control box and the wiring gets done up here. Uh, it isolates it and prevents that transformer from burning up. But uh, just wanted to throw a couple of quick tips out there everyone on this particular unit some of the things I've learned over the years 
there used to be a recall on these motors for a few years where you could swap them out for free. Uh, that has ended long ago, so it's not a warranty issue by train. It's just a part of the design of the unit. You get two or three years, four years sometimes out of one of those at the most. Um, but just make sure you're unplugging it if you see it. Something else I wanted to mention here that I've ran into two or three times over the years is uh, you get to a unit in the summertime, let's say, and you've got a water leak call on a train Voyager. Uh, what I've seen happen before is, so let's say it's 90 degrees and very humid outside, and this draft motor has failed and it's running all the time. This draft motor draws air in from outside, runs it through the tubes and blows it out the top. So you're sucking 90 degree air into the unit through the heat exchanger and out. You're heating the heat exchanger in essence. The unit is blowing cold air from the evaporator coil in and across that big barrel of that heat exchanger. And that barrel of that heat exchanger starts to condense moisture on the outside of it. And that condensation doesn't have a pan under it because it was never designed for that. So that water drips down into your supply duct and you end up with a water leak in the store. And it's been, you know, first time I found it was kind of a mystery water leak. It took me a couple of trips to figure it out. But um, what, it, what it also does is as that cold air comes through, goes in across that heat exchanger, you're drawing 90 degree air in and you're reheating the air. So it will decrease or, or destroy your discharge temperature in the cooling mode or even in the economizer mode. Not as much an economizer because the outside air temp's the same, but just something to think about, guys. Um, same thing can happen on a carrier rooftop unit. Same thing can happen on a, a York or a Lennox. If you have a draft motor that's running all the time in the summertime, it'll cause a water leak because it'll condense moisture on the outside of those tubes and it'll drip down into your ducts. So uh, that's about all I got for today, everyone. Um, Hope that helps. I know it's a short video. Just wanted to get something out on a follow-up on these. So uh, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, work safe, think safe, and uh, we'll talk to you all next time. Bye guys.